Uh, welcome once again. We introduced the concept of uh, standardized normal distribution in the previous class. I will continue on that again and then later on we will talk about um, something called T distribution. Uh, so what is standardized normal distribution? So basically you all know what is a normal distribution. Normal distribution we call it uh, uniform distribution, bell shaped curve and so on actually. So the left hand side here will be equal to the right hand side exactly. Um, that is why it is called an inverted bell. But um, when you transform this normal distribution um, and that is called standardized normal distribution where the mean is uh, centered around 0, so the mean is 0 and the area under the curve will become 1 and sigma that is the standard deviation will become also 1. Okay. So, what is the advantage? So, when we convert uh, a normal distribution into standardized it becomes very easy for us to compare one set of samples with another set of samples um, and so on. Otherwise what happens is um, any data for example if I am measuring heights of students the mean will be in terms of uh, some inches and um, the standard deviation again will be in terms of inches. If you am looking at height of uh, um, plants I may measure them in centimeters so height will be in terms of uh, centimeters the average height could be in terms of centimeters. If I am measuring weight of uh, the class um, then I will be measuring in terms of kilograms, 60 kilograms, 70 kilograms and so on. So we have a wide range of uh, numbers whereas when you convert this normal distribution into standardized form so that mean is always equal to 0 area under the curve is 1. So it becomes easy for us to compare and also if you look at the tables that are available for determining the area under the curve they are all assuming that uh, the total area is 1. So that is what is called standardized normal distribution. So basically what you do is we convert uh, uh, the data x into say for example x minus mu by sigma, mu is your uh, mean, sigma is the standard deviation. So when we do that um, suppose I put x is 1 sigma then z will become 1, if I put um, x is 2 sigma then z will become uh, 2, when I put z is equal x is equal to 3 sigma then z will become 3 and that is what it is shown here. So we have 1 sigma, 2 sigma, 3 sigma in terms of z it becomes 1, 2, 3 and similarly analogous minus 1 sigma will become minus 1, uh, minus 2 sigma will become minus 2, minus 3 sigma will become minus 3. So it is very, very nice. Um, so if you look at the area as I said the area under the curve is uh, 1 that is 100 percent. So if you look at uh, the area uh, spanning 1 sigma to minus 1 sigma it will become 68.3. If you look at the area uh, between plus 2 sigma and minus 2 sigma it will be 95.4 and if you look at the area be spanning between plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma it will become 99.7 and uh, so on actually we can even go up to 6 sigma. Uh, you must have heard of a term called 6 sigma. So if you are going up to 6 sigma then the area spanned will be 99.9999. Okay. So, that is what it is. So, what these numbers have very, very important significance as we go along we will find that this 95 and 99 play a very, very important role. So, when we say this area is 95 percent that is plus or minus 2 sigma then the area outside will be obviously 5 percent. That means this side that is one side of it or one tail of it will be 2.5 percent, the other tail of it will have 2.5 percent. Okay. Similarly, if I consider plus or minus 3 sigma as 99 percent, the outside area will be 1 percent. That means one side it will become 0.5 percent, the other side will become 0.5 percent. So now these are very, very important um, as we can uh, see later on when we talk about statistical significance. So when we say 95 percent uh, significance, 99 percent significance, then we are talking in terms of 100 minus 95 it is 5 percent significant, 100 minus 99 will be 1 percent significance and so on. So we uh, will be more interested in the area that is outside rather than the area that is inside. So this uh, 95 percent uh, spans plus or minus 2 sigma and 99 percent spans plus or minus 3 sigma. Okay? So we will talk about it. So how do you convert any data into z? It is very simple. I know the mean, I know the sigma. I take a data x then I use this formula and convert that into z. So um, if it is 1 sigma z will become 1, if it is 2 sigma z will become 2, if it is 3 sigma z will become 3 and so on. Okay? Um, so Excel also has uh, the function that is called norm dist function 
but norm dist function calculates this whole area ok. So, if I have a value of z here norm dist will give me the area of the whole portion. So, if I want to know the area of this portion that is outside then I do 1 minus norm dist ok. So, uh, when z is equal to 0 that means here obviously this area will be 0 0.5 because uh, it is symmetric and uh, uh, equal and when z is equal to 1 here that means this area will be 0 0.841 and if z is equal to 2 means then this area will be 9. 0.977. So, if you want to know the area outside this then obviously 1 minus 0.977 which will be equal to 0 0.023 ok. So, if I multiply that twice that will become 0 0.046. So, the area outside 2 sigma will be 0 0.046 if you if you remember in the previous case that is what it is right the area inside 2 sigma is 95.4. So, the remaining is 4.6. So, this portion is 2.3, this portion is 2.3. So, actually we do not do it as 95.4, we call it 95 itself as a round number. So, this outside area will become 5. So, this portion will be 2.5 and this portion will be 2.5. So, then that is what we do actually. Similarly, for 3 sigma we do not say 99.7, we say 99 percent. So, the outside portion will be 1 sigma. So, one side of it will be 0 0.5 percent, another per side will be 0 0.5 percent. 5 percent ok. So, we can use this um, norm dist that is available um, in uh, excel to calculate. Similarly, we can use this uh, graph pad online software and uh, that also gives you, but it gives you the different side, it gives you this marked area ok. So, when um, z, is, z is equal to 0 that means here the whole area will be 1, when z is equal to for example 2 ok. 2 sigma that is 2 in here. So, obviously, the outside should be around uh, 5 percent ok that is what this is showing approximately 0 0.0445. So, if z is equal to 3 when we say 99.7 <coughs> the remaining portion is uh, 3 percent ok that is what you are getting here ok. So, we can use uh, either uh, the simple and then uh, use the z table I am going to show you what is ah, this is an z table. Um, I, we can use the z table. So, for given value of z it gives you the area that is it is it gives you the this area it is called single tile it is because it is giving only one portion of the area whereas your graph pad gives you this plus this ok. So, I need to double this to get the results from graph pad ok. So, each one of these uh, um, softwares or excel function or the table give a z the, the area in a different way, but they are all uh, um, analogous to each other and we can calculate one from the other you understand ok. So, uh, the graph pad gives you this plus this area whereas, uh, the table gives you only one side of the area. So, obviously, if I want to um, make it appear like graph pad I multiply by 2. So, when z is equal to <coughs> any value for example, when z is equal to 2 it gives you 0 0.022 ok. 8. So, if you want to multiply twice it will become ok 0 0.022 mul, uh, two, two 8 multiplied by twice is 456 and uh, that is what uh, the graph pad gives 0 0.0455 ok. Whereas, um, excel gives you the whole area. So, when I multiply 1 minus that I will get this area which is similar to the area the table gives you ok. So, the table gives you z values z is equal to 0 0.1, 1, 2, 3 if you want second decimal this side ok we go up to even 7.9 ok. Uh, so, from there we calculate this area which is equal to this area. So, um, converting a normal distribution into a standardized normal distribution has many advantages we can do many statistical calculations and um, that is what we are going to do ok. Now, let us look at a problem. Now, tomatoes weighed in a packing machine uh, the mean is given as 250 grams and sigma is given as 0 0.2. So, this is uh, like a population that is why I put mu and sigma. So, it is collected over a very long period of time. So, it gives you this and this. Now, um, I have a tomato which is 250.5 grams what percentage will weigh less than this ok. So, I have taken one sample 250.5 grams. So, what will be the uh, weight of tom uh, what will be the percentage of tomatoes <coughs> which will weigh 
less than 250.5 grams. Okay. So, uh, what I do? Z is equal to x minus mu by sigma mu 250, sigma is uh, 0.2. So, z is equal to 2.5. So, I go to my table um, 2.5. Okay, 2.5 I get 0 0.0062. Okay, 0 0.062. Uh, so, 0 0.062 percent of the samples will may more than 250 because the table gives you this side, right? Okay, so table gives you this side. So, if you want to know this side, all obviously I man subtract by 100. So, 100 minus 0 0.62 is 99.28. So, 99.28 percent of the tomato samples if I pick up will weigh less than 250.5 grams. Do you understand how to do? So, I know mu 250, I know sigma 0.2, 250.5 substitute here, I get z as 2.5. So, I go to a table, z is 2.5, okay. so it is 0 0.0062. So, you should note that it is giving the outside area. So, I want to know tomato weighing less than 250.5, obviously I need to get this area. So, I can subtract uh, 1 minus 0 0.0062 or 100 minus 0 0.62 percent. That is what I have done here. So, 99.28 percent of the tomatoes will uh, weigh less than this particular number. Very interesting. Okay? So, it is a very useful set of data. Now, let us look at uh, another problem. So, again um, tomatoes the mean is 250 grams and sigma is 0 0.2 what percentage of tomatoes are expected to have weight between 249.7 and 250.4. So, I want to know this area, this area understand, okay. I want to know this area. So, what do I do? I put a uh, same formula z is equal to x minus mu by sigma, I will put 249.7 minus 250, I will get minus 1.5, then I will get a 250.4 minus 250 that will give, give me 0 0.2. So, I need to get the um, the area for minus 1.5 to 2. So, the this area that is between minus 1.5 and 2 is what I am interested in. Okay, now, z is equal to minus 1.5, okay, uh, the um, uh, table okay, will give me this whole area. So, obviously, I need to subtract that from um, 0.5 because this area is 0.5. Okay, so z is equal to minus 1.5 or z is equal to 1.5 it doesn't matter. So I take the z is equal to 1.5. That is 0 0.0668. Okay, 0 0.0668. But this this whole area, right? So I need to subtract a 0.5. That is this portion. Then I will know this area. So I'll subtract 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0668. That is 4332. That is this area, do you understand this portion? Now, z is equal to 2, I go again to the table, uh, z is equal to 2 is 0 0.0228. Okay. So, it gives you this whole area, but again I need to subtract the uh, 0.5 portion. It will give me the whole area according to from the table, um, but I need to subtract uh, 0.5 from that because of this because I need to know only this area. So, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0228 is 0 0.4772. So, this area, this area is 4772, this area is 4332. So, I add all, all I get 0.91. That means, 91% of the tomatoes will have weight between 250.4 and 249.7. Okay? It is a very useful um, way of calculating things if I know the mu and the sigma. Okay? So, as you can see how powerful it is. <coughs> now, um, of course, you can do the same thing uh, using uh, Excel norm um, dist function or you can also use the graph pad um, because you have to remember that uh, the graph pad results are uh, area of this and this. Okay? Whereas, uh, the single tile t table gives you this area. Okay? So, if I multiply this by 2, I will get the graph pad results. Whereas, the excel software gives you the inside area. So, I need to subtract 1 minus to get the outside area. Okay? So, that is the relationship between the uh, 3 different uh, um, approaches. Okay, now, you can uh, as a homework uh, take up and see whether you get the same answer. Um, as this using the norm dist function 
as well as the graphite function. I do not want to go into that. Okay? Now, there is something called the confidence interval. Um, I talked about it right 2 sigma uh, it is approximately 95 percent it is actually 95.4 we take it as 95 percent 3 sigma uh, is 99.7 but we will take it as uh, 99 percent. Okay. So, when we have a, a data set okay, okay, LR, I know the, um, the uh, global population mean and standard deviation and then I suppose I take one sample in it as uh, I mentioned long time back um, it is very difficult to take the entire population for sampling, but normally we take only one or two samples. Okay? So, I take only one out of this and 95 percent of the time okay, 95 percent of the time it will fall within this region. That means, uh, if I know the average mean 95 percent of the time it will be within this average plus or minus 1.96 sigma. Okay. Uh, how did I how did I get this 1.96? Okay, that is the 2 sigma as you know. Okay. 0 0.0 this is equal to 2.28 percent. So, multiply both sides that will come to approximately uh, 2.28 multiplied both sides will be approximately 0 0.045 percent. So, that is 95 percent here. Okay. So, 95 percent of the time uh, the data will lie between this region okay, the plus or minus 2 sigma. So, if I take a sample uh, 95 percent of the time it will lie between uh, mu plus or minus 1.96 sigma. So, if I want to know 99 percent obviously, I need to take this 3 sigma right that will be um, the formula is 2.58. Uh, because for 2 sigma as you know um, it will become 2 okay, this is 0 0.0028 for 3 sigma the outside area is 0 0.0013 right. Okay. So, we get like this. So, this is also very useful. So, if I am taking a sample if I am um, from a population if you take 10 samples from a population. Okay. So, um, I will know the mean of those 10 samples, but now I want to know uh, what is an estimate of the uh, confidence interval for the population. Okay? Because uh, the 10 samples which I take uh, will give me some mean, uh, but that will not be the exact uh, population mean. right? Because if I had taken another 10 samples, I would have got another mean. Uh, if I take another 10 samples, I will get another mean and so on, but they are not real representation of my population mean. So, I can use uh, this type of approach to tell what will be the range in which my population will lie. Okay, that is the advantage of uh, getting something called the confidence interval. Okay, now, uh, let us go to the next topic that is called student's t distribution. What is the student's t distribution? There was this was developed by somebody called William Sale Gosset. Okay. He wrote some very important paper in statistics under the pseudonym of student that is how it stuck on actually. Um, he said uh, normal distribution is uh, a bell shaped uniform, but then the n should be very, very large. But if I have very, very small n, no, if I have n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 30, 25 and so on, um, that also will be symmetric, but it will have heavier tails. Okay? not like a nice looking normal distribution, this is a nice looking normal distribution. Whereas, when I take uh, um, n is equal to say 1 or 2 or 3, um, it will have very tail, it will be uniform just like your normal distribution, it will be symmetric and all that, but uh, it will never be a bell shaped, a bell shaped should have been like this, right? like this. So, as you can see when I take uh, much smaller numbers it will be like this when I take a very large number as I see 8 um, ideally if you have more than 30 or 20, 30 um, then uh, you can almost uh, get a distribution almost looking like a normal distribution. Okay? That is what it is actually. So, when the sample size is small uh, than the population, so then um, we are going to get uh, a skewed uh, although it is uniform symmetric. Um, just like a normal distribution, but it will have longer tails. 
in real life uh, we are dealing only with samples we are not dealing with the population so obviously student t distribution becomes very important because uh, whatever i do i am collect i am collecting 10 students and measuring their height so that's a sample i am testing my drug on 20 rats that's a small sample i am taking 10 tomato plants and measuring their uh, weight that's a sample so student t distribution becomes very important and uh, uh, we might not collect 50 samples, 60 samples, 100 samples, we may collect 8, 10, 9 and so on. So that is how this T distribution will become important and you will come across uh, this term T, T, T many times um, everywhere in biostatistics, okay. okay. So what are the properties of this T distribution? Uh, the mean of the distribution equal to 0, right, because uh, it is also symmetric like just like normal distribution. The variance that is the spread is given by v divided by v minus 2 where v is the uh, degrees of freedom and v is greater than 2 and the variance is always greater than 1. So when uh, the degrees of freedom reaches infinity the t distribution reaches a standard normal distribution of course infinity but even uh, 30, 35 I would say it looks almost like a normal distribution. So if you have uh, 30 samples okay, then uh, I think it is almost like a normal. Uh, when to use this? So any statistics having a bell shaped that means approximately normal, the population distribution is normal, it is symmetric, unimodal, you should not have bimodal, I taught you what is mode, okay, that is the central tendency and it should not have outliers. If you have a samples of 30, it should not have outliers, it should be symmetric and unimodal. If the sample size is 40, it can be little bit uh, skewed but still it should be unimodal, no outliers. If, if it is greater than 40 then uh, it should not have outliers but uh, otherwise it is okay, okay. So the T distribution should not be used with small samples that are not approximately normal. That means if the samples are very small and it is not normal then be careful, do not use the T distribution. Um, so, there is something called test for normality, we will talk about that later uh, in the course of time to see whether your data is normal and if it is reasonably normal then we can use the t distribution. So as I said why do we use t distribution because uh, um, we always collect samples, we never collect uh, entire population data set, samples will be uh, uh, having a degrees of freedom of uh, 5, 6, 10, 20 and so on. So in most of the situations we use the concept of t distribution and perform the analysis, okay. Um, we also I need to know the population and sample, I am coming back to the same thing again again. So if I draw a sample uh, from a population and take the mean, I will get some mean. If I take another set of samples, I uh, will get slightly different mean. Uh, then if I take another set of samples, I will get slightly different mean. So these means will have its own mean and variance. So the mean of all these means is a good representation of the um, the population mean, but the um, variance is not really exact representation of the uh, standard deviation of the population, okay. So there is something called standard error of the mean, that is the standard deviation of the sample means uh, which is an estimate of population, standard error of all these means that is given by S divided by square root of N, okay. S is your uh, sample standard deviation, N is your number of data points, okay. So this is a standard error of the mean. In fact, this is a real representation of the standard deviation of the population. So we understand. So I have a population, I take a few samples and then calculate a mean. Then I take, put it back. Then I take another set of samples and get a mean. I will definitely get something different. Then I will take another set of uh, samples and then get a mean. So I will have a large set of means. So these means will have its own mean and some standard deviation. The means of the means is a good uh, representation of the uh, population mean, but the standard deviation of these means are not. And, uh, it is given like this, the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the sample means estimate of a population mean, okay. So 
s is your sample standard deviation and n is the number of samples you take square root of n. Okay. So, this is how it is and this standard error okay, is very very important. So, standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a set of means taken from a population. So, standard error is the standard deviation of all these uh, means which you have taken with the different samples you have taken from the same population. Do you understand? So, the mean of the, all these means is a good representation of the population mean, but the um, <coughs> if you want to represent standard deviation. So, if you get something called standard error is the, that is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a set of means taken from a population and that is a good representation of the standard deviation of the population and that is given by s divided by square root of n where s is the sample standard deviation okay? and n is your number of data or samples you pick up and this is very very important we use this in many calculations okay, as we go along. Okay. So, again we come back to student t distribution. Okay. Uh, so, t student t is almost like z you know they play the same role z you have in the nor standardized normal distribution whereas, uh, t value you have in a, a normal distribution with very small sample size. Okay. So, if I have a sample size of 4 um, mean is 100 sample standard deviation is 10. Okay. Then when I do a t distribution mean is still 100 the standard deviation will be 10 divided by 4 that is 10 by 2 which is 5. Okay. So, this is what it is and uh, as I said uh, the t here uh, plays the same role as okay, z in the standardized normal distribution. Okay. So, um, if you take a data as 100 here and uh, this is uh, 110 okay, and um, value of 110 what will be the t value here obviously, t value will be um, if you take the sample standard deviation as 10 t value will be equal to 2 actually that means, it lies 2 standard deviations from the mean. In fact, if you remember exactly um, in the z in the normal standard deviation also we had the same uh, numbers coming out. So, 2 sigma becomes 2 and similarly here um, 2 times standard deviation will become t equal to 2. Okay. Okay, so, as I mentioned uh, if n is equal to infinity you have infinity data points then at, um, 95 percent confidence will be instead of 2 sigma if you remember here okay, 95 percent confidence uh, 2 sigma but then we are talking about t where um, the number of uh, data points are supposed to be less um, than the population. So, there will be instead of uh, 2 sigma it will become 1.96 plus or minus sigma. So, you understand this 1.96 that is how it came here um, if you take a population then this will become 2 sigma, but uh, we are not taking a population here we are talking t distribution. So, it is 1.96. Okay. So, if n is equal to 6 that means, the number of data is very has reduced dramatically degrees of freedom n minus 1 then for a 95 percent confidence t is 2.57. How do you get this? There is a table which gives you that. Okay. We will I will show you that table. If n is equal to 3 uh, data is still less as you can see it is got a long tail it is symmetric uniform but the tail has become longer and longer none of them look like my beautiful normal distribution where here we are talking in terms of n is equal to infinity. Okay. So, we are talking about t distribution where n is uh, smaller than infinity. Okay. So, obviously, um, it will not look like a beautiful bell, bell shaped curve a uniform curve it will have a longer tail. So, when n equal to infinity in student distribution um, for a 95 percent it gives you a t of 1.96 and 1.96 okay. and for uh, n is equal to 6 it becomes 2.57 n is equal to 3 is 4.3. So, what do you understand this? So, if the data points keep going down the uncertainty also goes up because from 1.96 gone to 2.57 it is gone to 4.3 
So, that is there is a higher degree of uncertainty in the estimate of the mean. So, if I take only uh, 3 data points and take a mean, uh, the uncertainty on the population mean is higher because uh, uh, this is much larger. Whereas, if I take very large data point, uh, the uncertainty is much less because the graph also looks smaller, I mean more sharper. So, the area also is much less, do you understand? Okay, this is 1.96. Um, if you remember, I introduced that uh, some time back, right? Here, you can see this 1.96. Same thing. Uh, so it is a mean plus or minus. It gives you an idea about the confidence interval. Mean plus or minus 1.96. Sigma. So this 1.96 corresponds to 95% confidence interval. So it is not exactly uh, two sigma. Okay, that is when you use a. Uh, population when you use samples and try to get an estimate of population obviously it is 1.96 okay this 1.96 will come quite often uh, if for 95 percent similarly if i take 99 percent uh, instead of getting 3 sigma 3 i will get 2.58 okay so that's from the table i will show you a table called t table okay and that's very useful and um, the t table comes here Excuse me. Yeah, that is called the t table as you can see here. Okay. So, you can see um, for, okay, for a 1.96, you can see for infinite data points, okay, uh, for a 95 percent confidence interval. Okay, so, if you want to take a, a 99 percent confidence interval, it is about 2.58. So, these two numbers play a very important role. So, if I want to know a confidence interval and 95 percent uh, using t distribution, I need I will multiply by 1.96. If I want to know the confidence interval for 99, I multiply by 2.58. Okay? So, these two terms are very, very important. Do you understand? So, we go back again uh, in the t distribution. Okay? Um, so, when the data points are less, uh, it will have very long tail as you can see as the data points increase um, the tail goes down and um, which means we get more confidence in, est in the estimating the population mean when I have more data points. Okay. Now, we will continue this student t distribution in the next class also. Thank you very much. <laughs>